out here on our second launch attempt. Uh, we came out here on Saturday and the clouds were off. But now we're here on July the 4th. We're about to enjoy ourselves on the next little launch. But this time we have a way better view. Much better. You know, the Canaveral, we skipped all the tolls. Go back to back traffic. And uh, so, yeah, it's going to be good. Ain't that right? Transferring to orbiter internal power at this time. Discovery is now running off its three onboard fuel cells. Coming up on a go for all the sequence start. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Scart. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 17 seconds and counting. 15, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Go for main engine start. Main engine start. 2, 1, booster ignition and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery, returning to the space station, paving the way for future missions and beyond. on the shuttle as it breaks through the sound barrier. Discovery already three and a half miles in altitude, one and a half miles downrange, traveling almost 750 miles an hour. Everything looking good on the bird. 57 seconds into the flight, engines beginning to rev up. Standing by for the throttle up call from Capcom Steve Frick. Call acknowledged by Commander Steve Lindsay. Lindsay joined on the flight deck by pilot Mark Kelly, flight engineer Lisa Nowak, and mission specialist Mike Fossum. Mission specialists Pierce Sellers, Stephanie Wilson, and Tomas Ryder of the European Space Agency down on the mid deck. Ryder headed for six months on the International Space Station. One minute, 47 seconds into the flight, 22 miles in altitude, 18 miles downrange, traveling 2,600 miles an hour, standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Solid rocket booster separation confirmed, guidance now converging. Discovery's onboard computers commanding the main engine nozzles to swivel, aiming the shuttle for its precise target in space for main engine cutoff. How you doing, Hillary? Oh. 